It's a pleasure having you again, my friends, here on Wheel EduTech. And in this video, we'll be looking at part two on our activities in exponents or indices, okay? Now, if you're not so strong on your exponents, feel free to check out our playlist on exponents and indices, where, where you will learn about the properties or the laws of indices or exponents when working with them, all right? Now, I'll, I'll just be walking you through these lessons uh, pretty much quickly. Uh, so in the last video, we looked at part one. So we're going to, and we left off at question three. So we're going to pick up at question four, my friends. Okay. So let's say you walked into the exam and you saw a question like this. Um, open bracket and we have a 75, 75 over 1000, 1000. And that is all raised to the power of zero. Okay, my friends. Now you would have learned from the, from the third rule any base raised to the power of zero, whether it be a fraction, a whole number, an integer, or a letter, a variable, it doesn't matter. Anything raised to the power of zero, the answer will be one. Okay, my friends? So that's simply our answer. So let's move on to question number five. Okay? Now, in question five, let's say you saw a question like this. We have two upon five, two fifths. And that's all raised to the negative two. Okay, my friends. Now, when we were looking at the when we were looking at the lessons as it relates to a negative exponent, when a base is raised to a negative exponent, it's simple, my friends. All you have to do is just simply flip the base, and the power becomes positive. So, since I have a two fifths, I'm going when I flip that, I would get a five upon two. Okay. Notice I just simply turn this around. Okay. I bring my denominator in my numerator and I and I have placed my numerator now in my denominator I've just simply flipped that now my friends after you have flipped uh, the base the fraction in this case the power will become positive so I have a positive 2 there so really what this is saying now my friends I have a 5 in my numerator is multiplying itself two times okay that's what the power says and that's all over. I have a 2 in my denominator multiplying itself 2 times also. So this would be equal to 5 times 5 would give me a 25 upon 2 times 2. That would give me a 4. And we all know that this can be simplified. Uh, simplified. And we can say 4 into 25. That would give us a 6 and remain the 1 upon 4. Okay. And that would be our answer as a mixed number. Okay. Now, quickly, we can move on to question number six. So in question six, let's say you saw a question like this. We have a base a negative 3p, okay? And this is all raised to, this is all raised to the positive 2. Now, my friends, remember uh, from earlier lessons, I think it was the second lesson in the playlist, I said that whenever you don't see a power there, uh, you must always take it to be the power of 1, okay? You just look at the base. How many three, negative 3s three I'm seeing? I'm seeing 1, so I'm raising that to the power of 1. And also, when I look at the P, how many Ps am I seeing? And that's 1P, so I'm raising that to the power of 1. So basically, what I'll be doing now, I'll be using my power to power rule, okay? And you could always, as I've said, check out the playlist on that. Okay, if you're not sure, I'm saying negative 3 is raised to the power of 1. And I'm simply going to use the 2 outside the bracket there to multiply my powers. Okay, so I'll have 1 times a positive 2 there. Okay, so really, my friends, what I have here now, I have a P that is being multiplied by a P raised to the power of 1 also. And I'm simply going to do the same thing by using the power to power rule. 1 times my 2 out outside. So that's 1 times 2. So really, my friends, what is left over here? Here. We can simply say we can simply say no, my friends, that we have a a neg the base is negative three, and my power here you now is one times two, and that will give me a two. Okay, and my base p, my friends, my base p is also raised to the power of one times two, and that will give me a two. Okay. Now, essentially, what we are, what we have left here, this is saying this is saying negative three is multiplying itself two times. So let, let's just expand that just to show you what is really happening. I am saying negative three times a negative three. Okay, and that is also multiplying. Let's just change the color. That's also multiplying a p squared okay this statement here is saying the same as this so we know that a negative times a negative will give us a positive okay so and three times three that will give us a nine so that's positive nine and i have 
multiplying my p square. So you know that when multiplying letters and numbers, we can just rewrite it beside each other. And that would be our answer. It's, it's pretty much that easy, guys. All right. Hope that this was useful. See you in the other videos. Bye-bye.